everybody. Mick and Liz here. Welcome back to Sail Surf Rome. We're here in the beautiful Fakarava Atoll in French Polynesia. And we're here today with our new addition to the Rome family, Capico, who is now six months old with us uh, on Rome. So we spent last summer in New Zealand, 2017-18 um, summer, and we got to know the Carline family, Russell and Corinne, Elia and Breeza, and fell in love with them and the OC Tender. Hence why we left New Zealand with Capico, our OC Tender 350. And today Michael's going to show you around, give you a bit of a tour, a bit of a review after six months of usage. And yeah, hope you love it. I won't spend my time confined trying just to make ends meet. I'm gonna live while I'm alive. I won't be bullied by the hierarchy. You're never gonna know if you never ever go. And nothing in life comes for free. One opportunity to make things right. I won't die wondering. Guaranteed. If you ain't satisfied and you get it all wrong, you don't get a warranty. So don't sign the line that you don't agree. I'm gonna pack my bags, hit the road. There's so much to see. I got two eyes on the road. worth of groceries. Still got all our room for all the rest of the gear we keep in the dinghy standard. Four people. A little bit of bump. See how we go. One the power on. carbon reinforcement here because I know Mix a Maniac with his 20 horse so put more carbon there. But, mate you, you guys do missioning you know you do the surfers you're carrying tons of gear. So for our OC350 the 20 horsepower is probably a bit of overkill um, we definitely don't need that much power it gets up onto the plane really easy but for a positive note we have found that it's halved our fuel consumption so yeah, we're just cruising along with only half throttle and yeah, we're saving so much more fuel. So that's a really big positive, great fuel efficiency. I'm going to use a bit less fuel, I think. Less lower fuel consumption, you think? Yeah. Well, that's good we've only got about 500 mils of fuel left in the tank. There's so much room in the 350. Uh, so for our surfing missions, kite missions, any little explorations when we just want to put all our gear inside the dinghy, we love it. It's a perfect little adventure boat. All set for your first 
season, little strike mission, fishing, surfing. Let's see what we can find. Hopefully come home with some lunch. Have fun boys. It really is amazing how much more dry you stay in this dinghy compared to the inflatable cat dinghy we had if we went on a mission and we were you know plowing through a bit of boat slop or some waves it was great you could just charge through but we were saturated and if we were picking up any friends with luggage then everything was wet and it was yeah it was always a wet ride whereas I think in the OC tender most of the time unless it's really rough we all stay dry and everything in the boat stays dry it's protected and safe so it's awesome. Are you getting wet? in my pocket. And just a bit of carbon reinforcement where you guys hit the rocks. <laughs> yeah. uh, only two sorts of sailors. <laughs> One have hit the rocks and the ones that are going to hit the rocks. So this is probably the last time you'll have to pump up. Inflatable dinghies are finished with. Inflatable dinghies are the ancient history. Handling the dinghies no problem. It's super light being uh, composite so we can pull it up onto the beach no problem. That and then okay, come, you gotta bring it back, you gotta bring it back. <laughs> and then stop. We didn't, we didn't say I'm roll. filming. Yeah. <laughs> hey? oh. Oh, that red light. Oh, look. You better do it. Muscles? Well I don't know how you... You'll figure it out. Pick it up and turn. One handle? Not heavy. You'll figure it out, Liz. master wheels at the back so we just flip them down and it makes it really easy to drag up out of the water onto a ramp or even up onto the beach so we get it out of the water a lot of the time if we're going ashore uh, whereas before we had to find somewhere to tie the dinghy up now if we can we prefer just to get it out of the water and and put it somewhere safe chain it to a tree or a post and yeah that's been really good for us it's Real super slippery, easy to so. move around Take the weight on your hands and then you can just push with your hips rather than having to lean and you can also see where you're going. Backwards just, is yeah, the key. Yeah, something I've sort of, well, both ways work, but I reckon this way is pretty easy. This truck's boxed us out, we've a long way around. You're going to get Capico's wheels dirty. I'm trying to avoid the puddles. tender does have quite high sides so it's great for keeping everything inside dry uh, but it does mean it's a little more difficult to get into when you're in the water but it does come with a ladder if you need that Mick and I are fine we can just sort of launch up into the boat and push ourselves up with our arms but we did find the ladder was great when we've had um, parents on board or children or if you've got a lot of gear on and you need to climb into the dinghy out of the water the ladder works really well growing pain getting used to having a hard dinghy uh, and one of those things has
has been remembering to put the bung in. So our old inflatable cat had an open transom, which meant the water would just flow out and we could just drop it off the back of the boat straight into the water. And yeah, so it's taken three times that we've lowered the dinghy down, forgot to put the bung in if we're excited to go for a surf or, or something like that. So yeah, one thing we're having to get used to is remembering to put that bung in so we don't sink the dinghy. <laughs> Guess what I just forgot? Can you hear that noise? You sure can. You're so excited about surfing you forgot to put the bung in the dinghy. Ah! That's one of the best things about this dinghy is you can actually row it, save some fossils, not running the outboard all the time. Um, and the oars are kept really nice and safely and secretly up underneath the deck here. So there's a little bungee loop just up under here. Just drop them out. And voila, you've got a full set of oar, full sized oar. Ready to get you out of danger in case of an outboard fail or row on a nice day or as many days as you can to save some petrol if you're in a remote location or just to save your emissions wear and tear on your outboard it's all positives two rowing positions this is the forward rowing position on the thwart seat when you're in by yourself gets the transom up nice it skims along pretty good but it's a little bit squirrely not too bad though get the motor up out of the water and then if you've got a bunch of cargo and stuff in here you can use one of the seat blocks Pop that here. And then set the oars up in the center position. There you go. Voila. Voila. <laughs> Many in belief high currency, evidential of success. But true prosperity is health and happiness you don't gotta do what you don't want to do or be who you don't want to be teachers will teach and preachers will preach but the end of the day we're free so put them away almost the same process Stuck them back up in here bungee on and boom done secret don't tell anyone, so they don't pinch me oars from the dinghy dock, right? <laughs> all right, so let's go check out Capico, and uh, I can show you basically what how we've got it all set up. Come on over. All right, so stepping on. I'll start up the front, and then work your way through the different compartments down the back. Uh, up the front here is like the anchor bag. We keep our anchor in a, a separate bag, so we can. Uh, take it out and keep it on the board of the boat if we need to. Um, other than that, this big net up the front, you can see it's got everyone, we've got mum and dad on board at the moment, we've got everyone's shoes and thongs in there so we won't forget to take them to shore. The painter lives in here and also we've got a, uh, a bike lock, a really long bike lock for chaining it up when we go to uh, dinghy docks and public, public wharfs and stuff. That thread's down through here and he's locked onto the carbon tube which is uh, the main integrated securing point for the boat that runs through here um, underneath here let's get this to jump over with the camera is the 12 litre fuel tank that's bungeed in place here and the fuel line runs down underneath the uh, deck to the outboard down the back there positive of keeping the fuel tank up the front there uh, it, it's all about weight distribution, so this thing is always been easy about easy planing and low horsepower requirements. So by putting the weight forward, also using your tiller extension, it skims along with like no effort at all. And it stays up there nice and tight. Yeah, basically it's bungeed in. We even when, we've had no problem with it moving around. Even when we lift it, you'll see we've got a bit of a different way of lifting it onto the back of the boat on our davits. And we lift it on quite an angle to get it up, and yeah, no problem at all with it with it moving around with it once it's all bungeed in and lashed onto the little custom pad eyes. Rolling. Let's talk about storage. All right, storage. 
I'll show you through the storage compartments, uh, storage nets on this uh, thingy, and yeah, how, what we keep in each one of those and how we've sort of figured out to set ours up. Uh, starboard forward, we keep a basic first aid kit and some sunscreen and stuff in a lunchbox there. This is a, a bag with a, I keep for my surfing gear that I always keep on board, wax and fin keys and a spare set of fins. Often a leg rope as well if I'm going to be surfing heavier waves. Other than that, we've got a sail tie in there for and a little lightweight towel. And because it's off the floor, it always stays dry. If it rains or if there's a bit of water gets in the bottom of the boat, you uh, keep everything nice and clean and dry. Uh, starboard stern back here. We've recycled a uh, chia seed container as our main baler and we've got a sponge which we use to get most of the water out of the back if we get a little bit here otherwise take your bungs out while you're on the plane and the water disappears out two big bungs down the back here these are the seat blocks the infamous seat blocks stored under the stern tied in for buoyancy in the boat when they come out you sit on them for rowing in the two positions or if you're rowing from the forward position you sit up there sit on this one if you're rowing from the aft position uh, otherwise if we've got four people in the boat and we're going a long way we'll often put two seat blocks down two crew will sit up in here or two passengers will sit in here and then a couple of people side by side here and it's much more comfortable and drier because you're sitting inboard and the uh, the skipper's got good vision because he hasn't got people sitting in front of him if he's like picking his way through the coral or up the side of the reef and all that sort of stuff Okay, in our uh, port stern compartment, we keep two fenders. If we're tying up to a concrete wharf with a few barnacles or a, or a jetty or something like that, just protect the big rub rail, keep it in good condition, keep the dinghy all smick. And the ladder, which uh, goes in place just over the port side here. Uh, yeah, and then moving up to the last storage bag here, um, port forward. In here we've got a bit of refueling kit and a spare string for the starter motor for the outboard funnel rag uh, this is our grab bag we don't keep it in here all the time but in here we've got a couple of flares a handheld VHF and also if we're going on long missions we'll take our uh, satellite messenger our inreach just to um, you know we're in pretty remote locations here we can't really rely on anyone else to come and get us other than ourselves so we'll tell you a little bit more about the surfboard racks because they are uh, an addition to the, our OC tender that Russell agreed to put in there and um, yeah they're pretty cool. Yeah so like Liz said um, one of the main things for us is being able to go on trips up the coast and this dinghy allows us to do big runs you know five ten miles if we can't find an anchorage near a surf break and having our boards safe and secure on the boat while we do those missions is really important so Russ helped us uh, integrate uh, a pair of actually just regular car soft racks, roof racks into the boat and uh, here we lash our boards across and uh, it's been working out spot on. So the two lowers, we'll just chop them and sew them. Yeah, so the, so there's a gap about that much between the eyes on it. Yeah, there you go. Alright, that'll work. Sweet. Nice little custom adjustment. Surfboards. Surfboards. Sweet. Don't put bloody wax on the tender. Yeah, so this is pretty much the standard OC tender uh, with the full deck opti, opti grip deck option, which is pretty much standard these days as well. Um, our additional features we got were the Beachmaster wheels, rod holders in the stern. And, and we also added the ladder, which I just showed you, and the surfboard racks, which we spoke about before there too. That's uh, Kapiko, our OC tender, 3.5 metre version. And uh, yeah, we've had an awesome season with it and love it to bits. Thanks for watching. And if you're curious about the OC tender, come check it out. We are cruising around the South Pacific the next year or so. Very much now a part of the OC tender family. And yeah, if you've been having a thought about maybe getting one, come over, say good day. We can take it for a spin, we could even go over and 
check out your boat and see how you can get it fitted up on there and yeah any you want ask any questions and we're happy to answer yeah perfect you see you out there Ooh, that's pretty. Pack my bags, hit the road. That's really pretty. There's so much to see. Yeah. I got two eyes on the road, two hands on the wheel. Wow, that's really cool. That looks like a. That looks like a. Hat. Two eyes on that the road. Looks like a wheel. on the wheel.